often about what a small world it is, but it seems like I experience that every day. Mm -hmm. And Bob and I found out that we have union roots. You know what union is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know several of you, some of you work there right now. Um, but anyway, I'm a union girl. I grew up in upstate South Carolina, so I understand the the benefits and the challenges um, that you have in, in rural South Carolina. Bob's grandfather grew up there, so we've had fun talking about things like tenders. We had a few people that did. Sassafras tea. Um, anyway, so, uh, sassafras candy and um, orange candy. Anyway, we had fun talking about all those things. But the world really is small, and we are all interconnected. So that was kind of a nice treat for me to be able to talk to Bob about. My home, my home. You know, the one thing I think about it, the older I get is how much I really appreciate rural South Carolina. You know, I, I probably is at 18 thought I wanted to get away from Union too. And maybe I needed to do that to come home and to really appreciate what I have now. You know, certainly the talent of the people is equal to none. Um, the beauty, my goodness, even though it's freezing out there, y'all, it's beautiful. It was a pretty drive over. Um, you know, just the land, the tranquility, um, the, the, there is a strong quality of life. So we just need to enhance it, I think, with what we're doing. I just want to echo Ann's comments that it's really, really uh, gratifying to be able to be here uh, this morning and to be a part of this effort that's been spearheaded by my friend Susan. Um, I, c I come to this work um, from a variety of perspectives. One is I am a native South Carolinian. I am from the upcountry, which still is a part of South Carolina, although I was told the last time I was down at, uh, in uh, <laughs> St. Helena Island that uh, somehow Rock Hill and Charlotte were the same thing. I'm like, no, 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 Charlotte's in North Carolina. <laughs> and Rock Hill's in South Carolina. But, uh, but, it, but it, uh, I, I am a, a native. And so one, and, and this what, and Ann just uh, spurred a, a memory, uh, growing up in South Carolina, um, not all was peachy and rosy and peachy keen, and we had some really struggles as we evolved, but uh, I wouldn't trade um, my upbringing and the, and the strength that was imparted in me between my entire family, my, both my grandfathers, my father, my mother. It's enabled me to do anything I wanted to do in, in my professional and personal life. It just really has. And so I was talking with Ann earlier, Anytime I go anywhere and scratch the surface a little bit, somebody's from South Carolina doing something great. <laughs> so one of the things along the way we realized is that real small towns like families, the fights are the toughest and, and, and divisions go deepest. But in order to overcome that and thrive and survive and make our towns destination places, we have to then become uh, able to have conversations, work together, overcome the obstacles so that we can regenerate and do for self. Calvary's not coming over the hill anymore, folks. We do for self, and that's what this audit community does for me, and I'm so glad to be a proud of it. Thanks. Um, this also began with the opportunity for the Arts Commission to work differently through partnership. And when the um, South Carolina Promise Zone became a, an official designation, we saw that as an opportunity to maybe relook um, at the six counties here from Jasper, you know, up to Colleton and um, ask if we could do something different. And so that's basically where the Art of Community Rural SC came from, was this effort to just reconsider um, our reach um, our effect and how, how we knew people or didn't know people in the, in what is the six county promise zone. And, um, they used to write love letters back and forth and just recently I was reading them and it was just so fascinating because it's the history behind them and it's the story and I've always loved that aspect of where I live. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel it's my purpose uh, to uh, show the people the culture of Blackville. Like, like I said in the video, that's where I grew up at, running around barefooted, um, playing hide and go seek and everything. So, and, and, and just the people, the history. I, I enjoy history and, 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 I, and I love hip hop. Like, I just love the idea of rhyming, whether it comes in the form of poetry. Um, that's my passion, writing rhymes. And, and I just like to rap about 
uh, black deal, and I, I, a, a re, a, a, and also to just being a local rapper. Like I used to grow up thinking I had to be this big time rapper. I want to go to California, New York, and everything. But I'm already successful. Just being able to speak about black deal and the people appreciating that. I don't have to make millions of dollars. My not, I can teach, and like I said, use that in the classroom. So I just appreciate um, the Arts Council giving me the opportunity and acknowledging that. So, but yeah. This experience for me has been, uh, to be honest with you, this has always been one of my main, uh, one of my main missions is to get young people, not even just young people, but everybody, to uh, get a new perspective of rural areas. I think it's, you know, it's it's a negative perception of rural areas, and this, I mean, look at all the people in the room. I mean. You know, we're stronger together than we are separate. So with the efforts of everyone combined, um, I'm just happy to be a part of a bigger a bigger team to, uh, you know, all focus on the same goal. So for me, it's, it's just been um, an experience, an eye opener. Uh, I'm learning so much. I get excited during every meeting. So this is only my second meeting, but <laughs> I mean, it's enough excitement, man. <laughs> Thank you for letting me be here. I was born in Rock Hill, South Carolina in 1931, <laughs> at the height of the Great Depression. Uh, about 50 years ago, I married an immigrant from India who is, whose whole family is in turmoil these days, I might add. We married. Uh, when we had to get a license from the court of the notorious Clement Hainsworth, uh, uh, President Nixon's appointee, and he was adamant that uh, there would be no biracial marriages, that they were illegal. So Bhuvanish and I, we've got 15 great-grandchildren, but we're illegal and we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> This is community-based work where we are working to give young people access to, the, to educate, engage, engage, and motivate them to become part of the organizations that you represent. Not just, uh, I mean, in addition to being artists and scientists and whatever they are, to be part of your organization as leaders to come to the table and bring their perspectives and energy and passion to whatever you're doing. The, the next part, or part of our day is um, first person insights. And these are the first persons. So if there is a reason that this um, framework has worked, it's you're looking at the six people um, who've really made this work. And we cannot say thank you enough to um, each and every one of them for what they've done. So, <laughs> you know, and, and she loves this story because I had no clue what rural arts meant. I'd been a performer with the South Carolina Arts Commission. So I'm thinking, okay, they want us to do a performance. I'll do the classical part. Ashley can do the, 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 the uh, R&B part, Myra will play, and we'll be good. <laughs> and I got a team together and uh, I put a, a, a graphic artist on there because we on these posters. I put somebody who knows how to do invitations and place settings, put her on there. Um, went and found some people to speak to all of the community. So I put uh, the Reverend uh, from the First Baptist Church on there. And we met Susan. And we all met Susan. And I realized, you're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're just wrong. And uh, it has been the most marvelous mistake of my whole life. I did not do this willingly. I, 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 out. Uh, I was uh, uh, really tricked into this, uh, bribed. Uh, my county administrator was supposed to be the maven for Jasper County, but uh, he came to me and said, I've got too much on my plate. And I was like, I, I don't, you know. And, I, and he's like, would you be willing to do this uh, uh, for the, you know, for the Arts Commission, and I said, I don't really think so. And he said, well, there's a free trip to Kentucky involved in it. And I said, when's the first meeting? So, uh, any, any chance? Well, um, 
I too, when Susan asked me to be a part of this uh, team, um, first of all, I'm so honored that she asked me to do that. Susan and I met, what, several years back, and we've been working, I've been working with her with the arts for uh, many years. And whatever Susan um, asked you to do, you know, you're kind of silly to say no, because you know it's gonna be good. And it has been such an eye-opening for me. Um, this is my hometown here in Allendale, and um, we have a lot of wonderful things here, along with the challenges. Uh, our trip to Kentucky opened my eyes to so many things. That was just uh, outstanding uh, to see how other small towns um, have challenges and how they are working through them, navigating through uh, the hard times and making things work. Uh, making um, their little town look different. Um, never will be the way it used to be, but it still can be good, and that's my motto for Allendale. We have several challenges here, but we're working through them um, to make it uh, not just as good, but even better than it was before. Um, the trip meant so much to me, like Gary, I met so many wonderful people, and you cannot be in the presence of this man more than five, two minutes without laughing because he's going <laughs> to keep you laughing. Um, and uh, everybody was so loving and kind, not only the people on the bus, but the people that we met in Kentucky, every, every place that we went. And I was especially impressed with um, how proud they were of what they had, um, no matter how small it was. And it just gave me uh, new energy to say, yes, we can do this. We can do this in Allendale. So.
have a history of, of, of investing in rural communities. Uh, going back to a program that I think started in the very early 1980s called Rural Arts. And we were, I'm proud to say, one of the first state arts agencies in the country to really dig into that issue. And that program had a very long and successful run. It was succeeded by a program called Cultural Visions for Rural Communities. Uh, and that was specifically uh, an early attempt to link arts development and economic development in rural communities. Uh, and that had a, a long run too. So that was really the origin of this project. And as we thought about different ways of working, which Susan has really brilliantly done, uh, she also went looking for new partners. And one of the great new partners that we found in this work, and we are so grateful uh, for that help and support, was from the US Department of Agriculture, and specifically the Rural Development Division, and even more specifically, Bernita Dorr, whom we met when she was the state director for USDA Rural, and then she was invited to go to Washington and work at, at, at the US Department of Agriculture um, main branch, I guess you'd say, uh, in Washington, D.C. As, as an appointee of President Obama. I'm so grateful. So grateful to be here with you all. It means a lot to me. This is my first coming out since I retired in January. And um, had it not been for Susan, I would not have come out. But <laughs> really, but she, we've been connected and we've been talking about this great work and the great love and the arts and all the wonderful work that you're doing and the relationships that, that are being built. And I'm all for that, I'm all in. Uh, talk about the beginning of our relationship, if we can go that far back. Um, Susan had a vision, and in every community, you have to have somebody with a vision in your home. You have to have a vision. And you cannot let news like we got today stop you from dreaming or thinking or knowing that that can't stop me. This is what I see, this is what I know, and this will happen. And so Susan had that vision, and she came to rural development, and it, w it was near the end of our funding cycle, and. I said, well, shoot, we'll find some money from somewhere, and we did. And then last year, Susan did not give up. She said, I need some more money. You know, can you help? And I'm always a woman of faith, you know. And something y'all should remember is a song that we should sing in my church. We've come this far by faith. That means there was nothing to be seen, but we believed, and we moved forward, and then it materialized. So, so we figured out a way, and we were able to give another grant this year to continue with this beautiful work. I'd like to encourage you though, don't, don't stop. Don't feel because one source has dwindled that this thing must die. It can never die. Now that it's born, it cannot do anything but grow. When I looked, and I got up there too, uh, at the group, everybody's coming together, there's so much love, and that's the thing that I love about the arts. You can't find this kind of good feeling and this kind of good energy among 50 people anywhere else except <laughs> those that have the arts. I am delighted to be here for a whole host of reasons. I have to tell you that uh, I'm glad I forgot my mascara, ladies know what I'm talking about. Uh, because uh, throughout the morning in particular, as I listened to the Mavens and I listened to everyone who, who came forward and spoke, uh, I was honestly, welling up a, a number of times uh, from the, uh, uh, the passion, from the heart, from the authenticity that's at the core of what you're doing here. I can't wait to get to DC next week for National Arts Advocacy Day. <laughs> and the reason I can't wait is because we have stories to tell, very compelling stories. And so, you know, I don't need to walk in and sort of say, oh yeah, well, do you have a little money, oh, et cetera. <laughs> Instead, you know, I can give the case of why public dollars are so important to invest in our communities. The first rural promise zone in the uh, country, uh, the lead organization, Kentucky Highlands Investment Corp, uh, was in my portfolio. So it was sort of like a natural and I knew Sandy and, and you know, Jerry Rickett and uh, 
Brendan McDaniel. And so the whole idea of when my home state became the second rural promise zone, and then this initiative was brought to my attention, it was sort of like a no-brainer. <laughs> it was simply a no-brainer. And the whole, just to go back a little bit, uh, rural LISC has traditionally uh, not been engaged by name in creative placemaking. Uh, this is, there's nothing new under the sun. So we have, uh, from time to time, funded, you know, restorations in downtown areas that have to do with uh, uh, community theaters and arts and playhouses and different kinds of things. But um, I wish I could take credit for the aha moment, uh, but it was, uh, you know, all these things have tentacles and they're connected. There's something called the uh, National Rural Assembly and there's a gentleman, D. Davis, who was invited here, who's so busy right now, his phone won't stop ringing after November 9th. But um, uh, so D. had a, a, a gathering in Bethesda, Maryland. And I was on a panel uh, talking about rural economic uh, development. And a woman uh, by the name of Janet Kagan came up and started castigating me about why wasn't rural LISC in North Carolina. And I said, we are in North Carolina. And she said, you're not in North Carolina. And I said, I am in North Carolina. <laughs> she said, where in North Carolina? I said, in Wilson. She said, you can't be in Wilson, because I work in Wilson. I've been there eight years. And, 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 and I've never heard of rural LISC in Wilson. I said, well, we work through our partners. Well, who's your partner? Wilson Community Improvement Association. I never heard of them. I'm like, whoa. So we did some more talking. And it came down to a physical thing called a railroad track. She had been doing her work on one side of Wilson with a very dedicated bunch of creatives who were doing organic farming and, uh, and, and, and art restoration. And she said, so where is the office located? She said, it's on Green Street. She said, well, that's four blocks away from where I'm working. And she, and she had to drive by to verify that it was there. And then she came back and said, well, yeah, the, it is there. She said, but you know what Real List can do for me? You guys can help us fund a, 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 a USDA certified commercial kitchen. That's what we need. I said, Wilson Community Improvement Association already has one. And it's vacant right now. She goes, get out of here. So I said, okay. I'll, so one, one of our things is conveners. I got a call between Janet and Barbara Blackston. And, and so, so the, the, the long way of saying this is, this is about connecting and, and, and taking down barriers. Uh, you young colleagues, that needs to go on the road. Um, I do this every day all over the nation and world. I have never seen a better video than that video. <laughs> and here is why, original voice, unmediated, four different stories, three young black men and a young woman. That needs edited down because if America hears five minutes of that, they have to change their view about how important small rural places are to our nation. You need to do that, seriously. Rural makers and culture bearers, particularly young rural makers and culture bearers because of isolation and scale and class and race do not know one another even in the same rural county. Gifts that are given that are not received because they aren't known are gifts wasted. We have to change that somehow. Next generation leaders must guide us, we must listen, we must get out of the road and let them lead. Uh, we're going to announce two new states that will be our next two states and uh, one will probably be West Virginia but we would be deeply honored if South Carolina would consider being the next generation state.
we change the tour up just a little. So our first stop is going to be at the farmer's market so that um, you get a chance to um, see a farmer there. So that's where we're on our way right now, okay? okay. Cinderella. Oh. Um, and Susan was in it. Oh. Yeah. 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 We got famous people in our family. 